we had a radical left government making proposals that any bankruptcy lawyer in New York would just agree with in a jiffy. On, uh, on the 25th of June, in the Eurogroup, I was presented with a very comprehensive proposal from, by an institution. It was more or less on the take it or leave it basis. And what we said was, for us, just reading it, and I'm sure that any independent observer would agree with this, this was another extend and pretend. If we were to agree on that, we would be extending the crisis for another few months. Yeah. Um, they wouldn't, the banks would be open, but we would have exactly the same situation as we've had in the last five months. So what we're saying to the Greek people is, no more extend and pretend. Please back us to say no, not to, any, to a deal, but to this deal, which has absolutely no specific funding proposal coming with it and no uh, debt sustainability analysis that is worth the paper that is written on. So this is what we're saying no to. This kind of mentality, where yeah, just sign up, take a, a small tranche of money just to tie you over for a few months, and then we come back to the same crisis, to the same crunch negotiation. Yeah. It's time to end this. Why is Greece constantly on the brink of collapse and with Grexit in the air? The reason is the extending and pretending. It wasn't the, the radical left government. We're a, a product of the failure of these programs. So what I'm saying is this. We really desperately want to stay in the Europe. Right. Even if we're critical of the uh, institutional framework of the euro. Once you're into, uh, inside a, um, a monetary union like that, you don't want to get out. It will be catastrophic. So we want to be in it. So the question for the Greek people is, how do you stay in it? Do you stay by further extending and pretending? I believe not. If we sign that agreement that was offered to us by the institutions, in six months, 12 months, we'll be even closer to insolvency, even closer to Grexit. Yeah. So, I'm not going to put this question to people because if you were asking me, do I want Greece in the Euro, I would say absolutely yes. It's a senseless question. The Greek people want us to stay in the Euro. The referendum is about how to achieve that. Do we achieve it by accepting and another extending and pretending? I don't think so. Or by rejecting it? I do think so. Think of the election campaign. Um, think of all the, the conservative parties and centrist parties that campaigned against us from across Europe. Right. Mr. Rajoy, the, the, the Spanish Prime Minister, came here and campaigned in favor of the sitting government at the time. Uh, look at the, the, what the, the German press, the French press was writing at the, at the time. They just didn't like the idea of our government. Not so much because we're left-wing government, because left-right means nothing these days. This is a question of do we challenge the established uh, logic, which in our view is irrational, that uh, you need to impose the greatest austerity on the most uh, recessionary economy. And they don't like the idea that we're going to challenge that, that, you know, that, that supposed logic. I think they trust us to do what we say we will do. And they can see that with a referendum. They don't like what we're doing, which is to challenge a logic that yeah. has failed. Look, nobody likes to be told they were wrong. So imagine now we have the three largest yeah. institutions in the world, the IMF, the European Commission, the European Central Bank. They've been imposing upon this country a certain program of reforms, of fiscal policy, which is the greatest failure in economic history in the world. Yeah. Right? They don't like to hear that. They want to pretend that it is a, the reason why we ha we're in trouble is because we were elected and you know, there was a program that was working. It wasn't working. That's why we were elected. Yeah. And that it's all the fault of the Greek government. It isn't. It's Let's about time they, they, they come clean on their failures. So, Greece will be in Chapter 11? Well, we've been in Chapter 11 for, since 2010. Okay. Why are we in this mess? Because we were insolvent then. The problem was that nobody wanted to, to admit to it. And they treated the problem of uh, insolvency as if it were a problem of illiquidity. And we, you know what we're saying? This economy has lost yeah. w one quarter of its GDP because of that. But extending you, you and pretending. And it's about... It's about time we ended it. You well, yes, but the actual outcome, the, w what we do with this economy, and whether we carry on extending the crisis into the future, pretending that we solved it or yeah. not, will depend on the outcome. W if there is a yes, we have committed to signing on the dotted line of the kind of agreement that was offered to us, in which case the ECB will be happy to open the banks. Right. About an hour? You think it, it, that quickly? We've been negotiating now for five months. We know right. their position. They know our position. Uh, we, we, we are ever so close when it comes to the reform Outlets. package, extremely close. Just compare and contrast the institution's uh, proposal regarding the SLA, the staff level agreement, which is the fiscal and reform package, and look at ours. They're ever so close. What is not close is the general framework of funding and debt restructuring in which this has to be embedded to make it viable. They wanted us to, to sign on the dotted line of a non-viable, from a funding perspective, from a debt uh, sustainability perspective, agreement of reforms and very harsh reforms for us because we, you know, the, 
uh, we don't consider them to be proper reforms. We consider them to be yet another um, uh, version of austerity. But we were prepared for the, for the sake of reaching an agreement to sign it. But it has to be made sustainable. Because otherwise, you would be back here. If we agreed to the proposal that was given to us on the 25th of June, you would be back here in October, November, talking about another crunch negotiation. This country has had enough of it. We wanted to have a difficult agreement, a difficult reform package, one that makes us cross many of our red lines as a political party. We were prepared to do this for the sake of Europe and Greece. But at least tell us, is this going to be the end of this negotiating under conditions of crisis? So the answer is no, because they have, no, they have absolutely no credible funding and debt restructuring proposal to come along with it. Do they believe that the Greek debt is sustainable? No, they don't. Ask any independent, sensible observer or economist, they will say the same. Well, we are unre unreconstructed Democrats, aren't we? Right. We said that we're going to take this to the Greek people, and if the Greek people say yes to this particular... Um, I don't have the moral right to sign another extend and pretend which is condemning this economy to further stagnation, because let's face it, ask any of a member of our audience at the moment who is an investor, would you invest in a country whose debt is not sustainable, according to the IMF? This is why investment has dried up. Uh, the only investment we've had was speculative uh, money that has come in, um, in and out, and no serious investment in productive capacity has been made, Na naturally. So we, are we want to reform this country, uh, and we're prepared even to accept reforms that are not palatable to us. Yeah. But we want to do it in the context of a, a debt restructure and an investment program which crowds money in, and takes Grexit off the table. The only way to, to take Grexit off the table is not to get rid of this government. The only way to get the Grexit off the table is to get rid of those funding cliffs and the unsustainability of the debt. And they treated the problem of uh, insolvency as if it were a problem of illiquidity. And we, you know what we're saying? This economy has lost yeah. one quarter of its GDP because of that, but extending you, you it for And it's about, it's about time we ended it. You personally won't sign a deal without debt reorganization is being part of it. That is no, I prefer to, fundamental I prefer, to you. I prefer to cut my arm off. Okay. So that's, th 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 that's a pretty big red line. I've been saying this <laughs> since, uh, s since I can remember. Right. Yeah. Uh, remember, I'm going, still going to be a member of parliament. Right. Yes. Okay. Together with the rest of the government. And we're going to have a very solid base from which to make the point that it's about time Europe accepts some, a very radical principle, the principle of democracy, and the principle of rationality, two principles that yeah. emanated from this you, continent, you which uh, have been set aside uh, recently. So you may step aside, but you still think that Syriza will be the bulk of the government post this, post this referendum? Well, Syriza is going to be the, the major force in Greek politics after Monday, whatever happens, and right. we're going to make sure that this country is given the chance it deserves to become a proper first class, not second class or third class uh, citizen within the, Euro the European Union and the Eurozone. At the moment, we've been treated as if, uh, just like uh, yeah. in a debt colony, you don't have rights. Not only do I have an Australian passport, but I left a job at the University of Texas to, to be here. But let me say this, the moment I decided to throw my hat in the ring, the political ring, right. I also decided I'm not going to leave, whatever happens. So I'm going to be in here with a lot of them.